So I will happily agree that logically we we cannot rule out miraculous events that conflict with modern science or the laws of physics. And even a militant atheist, which I'm not, I hope would be able to concede that we can accommodate something like the resurrection without having to seriously modify our understanding of physics. But this leads to another and not unrelated question, which is how you read texts that are important to Christian teachings, such as Genesis. So how do you make sense of the beliefs of other Christians also that the world is only five or 6,000 years old or that Jesus coexisted with dinosaurs? And to be clear, I'm not trying to trap you or anything like that or to ask you to defend their views, but there's a serious issue involved in after having determined that there is a God and the world is a fundamentally religious world, just which of the many religious doctrines is correct and how to interpret the texts that seem to conflict with science? Yeah, thank, thanks for that question. A very important question. Um, as I said earlier, I take the Bible very seriously. I consider it to be, in a certain sense, authoritative for, for Christians. Um, and um, and and so I, I read it very assiduously and and um, and try to make sense out of these things. Um, the Bible, though, is actually a very complicated book, uh, and actually it's a set of books, and it has lots of different types of literature in it. You know, there's poetry, there's history, uh, there there are laws, there are there are uh, traditions, there are um, gospels, which are sort of potted biographies, there are letters, and so on and so on. Uh, lots and lots of different type of literature in the Bible. I mean, anyone who thinks seriously would, re would recognize that. One type of literature that there isn't in the Bible, is not in the Bible, is scientific literature. And the reason is because scientific outlook Really, the way we understand it today, you know, only dates back to the 17th, approximately the 17th or the 16th century. Um, and, and people just simply in the time when the Bible was written didn't think in the same way that we think today. They didn't think in terms of the laws of, of physics or of nature. They might have thought of, law, of laws of God, um, but not laws of nature the way we think of them today. And so, I think it's a great mistake to take something like the book of Genesis and try to read it as if it's a, a scientific description of the way in which the world came to be the way it is. Um, there are Christians um, who do so, um, and I think that their approach to hermeneutics is, is mistaken. Um, I, I think it's pretty obvious that if you read the first chapter of Genesis, which is where we read about the seven days of creation, um, that the main message of that um, of that book of that uh, chapter of Genesis is not here is how God made the world. It's not how God made the world, but it's that God made the world. In other words, what was important to the early Hebrews, who were, you know, uh, who were these monotheists surrounded by tribal deities, and it, probably initially they thought of Yahweh in, in the same kind of categories as the as the people of the tribal uh, who had the tribal deities around them. That realization that was that is embodied in Genesis is that no, actually, if God is truly God then he's the creator of the whole thing. He's not just another tribal deity that fights for the Hebrews and you know the other people have their gods and they fight for them and so forth. In other words, it, it, it was a step forward in understanding what it means to talk about God. And, uh, and, and that uh, first chapter of Genesis, and, and we could talk about succeeding ones, but we probably won't have time, uh, it, 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 to interpret that as some kind of scientific description of the sequence of events um, by which the world came to be created is, it, it seems to me, a foolish um, way of interpreting the Bible. It's not consistent with the type of literature 
that is represented by the book of Genesis. And it's not consistent with the, the situation uh, that the writer of that was writing to the people of, he of the Hebrews in. So bottom line is, I do read uh, Genesis very much to find out um, how uh, the people of Israel understood their God and, and how I should understand God. Um, but I don't feel compelled to turn it into some kind of scientific text and then put it, you know, at loggerheads with the physics that, that we know today from uh, exploring the reproducible nature of the world. Mm -hmm.